hydrodissection has been established as a useful and advantageous technique employed by most surgeons in nearly every case. Following a successful continuous curvilinear capsule rexus opening, I accomplish hydrodissection just under the anterior capsule using a 30 gauge cannula on a 3 cc syringe. This fluid injection will normally cause the lens to herniate forward. Completeness of the hydrodissection is verified by easy rotation of the nucleus within the capsular bag using the 30 gauge cannula. It is very important to ensure that one has an adequate opening in the anterior chamber to avoid pressure buildup and a possible blowout of the posterior capsule or rupture of zonules. Although partial hydrodissection may be adequate for some phaco techniques and may be unnecessary in some soft cataracts, hydrodissection facilitates most variations of the divide and conquer nucleofractus techniques of phaco emulsification. Hydrodissection adds safety and efficiency to these cracking techniques, whose inherent principles demand nuclear rotation. There are cases, however, where hydrodissection cannot be used, and for these reasons, I would like to present a method of manually dissecting the capsule from the cortex, which we have termed hydro-free dissection. The principle of manually dissecting is not new, in 1984, Dr. Anise described separating the anterior capsule from the cortex with a spatula. A short time later, Dr. Henry Hirschman accidentally injected more BSS than intended and noticed a fluid wave traveling rapidly around the capsular bag which freed the nucleus completely from the cortex. More recently, Dr. Stephen Brent and others have continued to define the role of hydrosonic system, an instrument designed by Dr. Anise for hydrodelineation and nuclear fracturing. Dr. Michael Blumenthal is credited with coining the term epinucleus and popularizing hydrodelineation with this lamellar separation for planned extracapsular surgery. While the classic description of hydrodissection was an injection next to the capsule, Dr. Howard Fine has recently been proposing that if during hydrodissection the cannula lifts the capsule before injection and is placed near the equator, the fluid wave will dissect more completely between the capsule and the cortex. I would now like to present two cases where standard hydrodissection was contraindicated. This gentleman's anterior chamber was shallow, the lens was mature, we could not see the posterior capsule, and because of the possibility of a posterior capsule defect, hydrodissection was avoided. As the lens material is removed, we did find this pre-existing defect in the posterior capsule with fibrosis along the edges. This next case of congenital cataract shows a posterior polar cataract which well may be associated with a defect or a very distinct weakness in the posterior capsule under the defect. Hydrodissection should be avoided in these cases. Expanding upon the ideas of Dr. Nice, who manually separated the anterior capsule from the cortex, Dr. Fine, who tents up the capsule before injecting near the equator, and our own experiences, we propose a greater use of this lifting technique in standard cases, and to use them exclusively in cases where hydrodissection is contraindicated. For the purposes of this film, we have termed this, rather than hydrodissection, hydro-free dissection. Following capsularexis, hydro-free dissection is accomplished using the cannula to lift and tent the anterior capsule in a sweeping motion to separate it from the cortex back to the equator of the lens. This manual separation of the capsule from the cortex or hydro-free dissection, is achieved with a straight cannula to reach the inferior portion of the anterior capsule and a straight or bent cannula through the paracentesis to reach the 12 o'clock area. No fluid is injected at this point. With this separation of the cortex anteriorly, 
there is less resistance to rotation of the lens within the capsular bag. Additionally, once the nucleus and epinucleus have been removed, the cortical material will fall away from the anterior capsule and may all be aspirated with the phaco port. If not, it is more easily engaged with the irrigation aspiration port for stripping from the rest of the capsule. This is particularly advantageous for removal of the 12 o'clock cortical material, as demonstrated in this surgical footage. If this material cannot be engaged with the IA handpiece, I use a bent cannula through the side port to loosen it and then remove it with the IA. The essence of the hydrofree dissection technique, then, is this manual lifting of the capsule, followed by a sweeping motion with the cannula to separate the capsule from the cortex, first inferiorly, and as far as one can reach with the cannula, and then through the side port incision, either with a bent cannula or as shown on the surgical footage with a straight cannula for the upper portion. There may be a small area under the side port that cannot be reached. In the last few years, there's been a tremendous emphasis placed on the wound and the management of astigmatism postoperatively. The hydrofree dissection technique has an application with a number of these new incision and closure methods that I would like to share. As has been described earlier, the technique allows manual separation of the capsule from the cortex in the 12 o'clock area through the paracentesis side port incision. When utilizing the new self-sealing wound architecture, hydrodissection cannot be used through the side port with these incisions without overinflating the anterior chamber and risking rupture of the zonula. With the continued growth in the popularity of phacoemulsification techniques using nuclear fracture, there's a growing dependence on nuclear rotation facilitated by hydrodissection for maximum efficiency. The manual dissection of the capsule from the cortex in the 12 o'clock area thus allows one to avoid injecting fluid through the paracentesis or to use the Binkhorst type cannula. I've personally always used a bimanual technique of phacoemulsification and advocate this method for greater safety, efficiency, and to extend the advantages of phaco to such challenging cases as small pupils and dense brunescent cataracts. There are a number of surgeons, however, who prefer a one-handed technique of phacoemulsification. For the purposes of this film, I will demonstrate such a technique of sculpting. These surgeons utilize the cortex capsule adhesions to stabilize the nucleus for deep sculpting. This hydro-free dissection of the anterior capsule leaflet still leaves the posterior adhesions to stabilize the nucleus to the capsule. Further, it will facilitate the removal of the cortical material in the 12 o'clock area because it hangs away from the anterior capsule. This technique of hydrofree dissection can thus be applied either without fluid altogether or prior to fluid injection when appropriate. It has been our experience that this lifting maneuver, followed by injection directly under the capsule, creates the cleanest dissection by allowing more direct access to the equator. The technique of phacoemulsification has caused us to look at lens anatomy in a different light. We now consider the lens as having a central nucleus, an epinucleus, and a cortical layer. Traditional hydrodissection has greatly enhanced manipulation of the lens nucleus within the capsular bag without causing zonular stress. We believe this technique of hydrofree dissection further extends these principles by allowing safe capsule cortex cleavage in high-risk cases such as posterior lenoglobus and penetrating or perforating traumatic capsular defects. By ensuring complete capsule cortex cleavage of the anterior capsule and adding an element of safety and efficiency to routine hydrodissection. <laughs>